Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? SoundWeb Studios is the answer. SoundWeb Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has got great reviews in Eve 11 and George by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and Manilis. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music. Also heard on HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, Oldies Radio, and a few of the networks coming soon. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today and TikTok. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts along with baseball gear and more 24-7. Make sure you go to Amazon.com for more. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson ZM for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson ZM. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you give generously today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who is the author of uh, several war winning books, uh, How Come the Idiots Rich and I'm Not? Also, Secrets of a Millionaire in Real Estate. Um, investing also how to avoid the uh 75 most co commonly costly mistakes every investor makes also unlimited riches and uh pizza with a rabbi actually had some pizza with him before too he's a new york times best-selling author and wealth expert for cnn and fox news what well, renowned uh, intellectual and significant figure in the spheres of real estate investment and uh branding negotiation also became a millionaire at 32 and overcame um a number of obstacles worked with numerous high-end uh, clients and we're going to be talking about what the experts predict will unfold in real estate. We'll find out just one minute. But live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios, somewhere in the United States, traveling 6 million miles. It looks like he's about to go uh, 6 million miles and one. Ladies and gentlemen, New York Times bestselling author, wealth expert, and um, well-renowned, multi-talented, ladies and gentlemen, the multi-talented, Robert Shemin. Robert, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Mike, great to be here. Thank you for that great introduction. And you How know are you today? I'm doing great. And you know something too, after looking at your accomplishments, I mean, it, it is amazing what you do. You're a New York Times bestselling author, wealth expert for CNN and Fox News, world-renowned intellectual and significant figure in the spheres of real estate investment, branding, negotiation, and more. You be a millionaire at 32, retiring from investing. And um, you also um, overcame a number of uh, obstacles as well. You worked with numerous high-end work clients. You also had uh, several books out there, as mentioned. Um, is especially with uh, how come that idiot's rich and I'm not. I'm sure everybody's asking that question. And of course, uh, the question <laughs> is what experts predict will unfold in the future in terms of real estate. Before we get into all that, Robert, tell us how you first got started. First, excuse me? Tell us how you first got started. Well, uh, I uh, didn't speak till I was 10, I had a speech impediment. They got thrown out of high school, never graduated. I uh, didn't realize I was 18, I had dyslexia. Kind of a slow start, if you don't uh, mind me saying so. <laughs> And uh, when I was 18, when I was at dyslexia, I was really going nowhere fast. Like most people, uh, maybe like you, came from some, from some really hard work parents and grandparents who taught me, uh, go to school. If you don't like it, suffer. Go some more. <laughs> get <a job. laughs> you know, get a job. Uh, work hard, which we all did. And, you know, we're never going to make any money. R rich is another club. Rich people are bad. Money's bad. Banks are bad. Everything's bad. You know, and you just got to work. And uh, if you don't like your work, work more, work harder. And if you suffer enough, make when you're 60, 70 years old, you can retire with a few dollars and have fun for a year or two, and then you die. That was kind of my program. And, you know, everybody was really stressed. We, we, we had a farm. I'm from Tennessee. We always had some deep, but never had money. I went out on the streets when I was 15. And I thought it would be impossible to make money that 
rich people in another club and be really smart. And uh, when I was 29 years old, here's how I got started, Mike. I ran into a mentor a guy that later became my mentor who just like me had really no background, no education, no money to speak of. Started buying real estate. And when I met him about 25 years after he got started, he had over 120 properties paid for, was taking six months vacation a year, which nobody in my family took more than two weeks. You know, you get fired and uh, <laughs> was making millions of dollars. And I'm like, wait a minute. If this guy can get started with no money, no credit, uh, maybe I got a chance. And uh, I hired him and he showed me how to do it. And like most people, the first year I, I worried, wondered, debated, did nothing. And after one year, I started buying properties using money partners because I had no money or credit. Quickly got about 11 properties in eight months. Uh, then I went to 20 properties and 100, then 300, then 500. And uh, that was it. And I fell in love with business and real estate using systems. Started with no money or no credit. And now I've written 18 books, go around and uh, teach people how to do it. And I'm still an active investor, kind of a serial entrepreneur. And I guess all that stuff, Mike, I'm attention deficit disorder. I get bored. So I got to keep, keep working, keep starting stuff. But <laughs> he is, you got to do what you love and love what you do. Um, I love it. I love deals. I love real estate. I love business. And I love helping others become successful. Hmm. That's really interesting too. It makes me think of the Geico lizard. Just love what you do. And, and if you love what you do, it's not a job. So you kind of mind me of the Geico lizard, which is really good. So and very colorful too. <laughs> I love that little lizard. You know, I used to work and I would look at the clock. It seemed like two hours ago, but it'd be like four minutes, you know, because I was working in restaurants, making no money, not, you know, couldn't pay my bills hardly. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of businesses to start, but bottom line is if you want to make money, you pretty much either got to be an investor you know, which uh, most people never get started on a systematic savings and investing program. They they need a ton of money. Uh, number two, I like real estate, of course. It's a good business. You know, 80, 90% of the multimillionaire billionaires, even though a lot of them made their money in tech now, do real estate. And then, you know, uh, number three, starting your own business of some sort. You're either working, you're either building someone's business or building your own. And I always recommend even part-time, build your own. Why not? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important too these days, especially we're in a gig uh, economy as well too. You used to be the um, 40 hour nine to five, get your benefits and everything else. And now with the state of the economy, and of course we pretty much go into a gig economy and it's also uh, opened for, um, you know, starting up your own business or sole proprietorship, LLC, or even like, you know, who really don't know anything about business, you know, just a simple freelancer. That's right. You know, I'll say, well, what business do I start? I'm like, well, what do you love to do? What's your hobby? I've got a friend and, you know, I'm not recommending this. His hobby was wine. He loved wine. He wasn't a drunk, just love, you know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I, I, said, I love wine, but in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Cheers. That and coffee too. I'll go, I'll have some wine with you after this. So. <laughs> I have a coffee business used to support my, uh, support my foundations. Um, so, you know, take what you love. And he went out and started blogging, you know, like you, and you're really good. And uh, by the way, the pictures on your pillows and uh, bags look just like you so oh thank that's a you good thing. thank you feel free to purchase some <laughs> i will they look nice look good um thank you great stuff and you know do what you love and love what you do and, and make your hobby your business he started uh, writing about uh, blogs about wine and now he uh, makes millions of dollars became a wine expert uh, we did coffee you know you just raise your coffee cup um, i have friends that like to travel and they write about traveling make video about traveling and do, do, get paid for what they love to do so Everybody, if they want to, can start something because as you know, from the pandemic, from some of the biggest companies in the world going bankrupt, there is no job security like or maybe our parents and grandparents had. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so true as well, too. I remember the depression, too, with uh, my mom and dad are saying, you know, get a job, get a trade, go to college and everything. Make sure you work nine to five and just have security. Nowadays, it's pretty much like the baby boomers. I have to say is that it's pretty much the last of generation who thrive on that. Now you got the um, Gen X, you got Gen Y and whatever generations out there. They're pretty much uh, tur turn the whole thing um around as well too, starting with the Gen Xers and you got the um, Gen Zs and uh, millennials with their uh, different view of work and also different view of uh, investing business and everything else. Yeah. When I was born and raised in Nashville, which I love, it's a great city, got family up in uh, de uh, uh, North Dakota where you're from. But I'll tell you now, you couldn't say this 30 years ago, you can live anywhere, work anywhere. I live in Medellin, Columbia, got voted the number one best retirement city in the world, nice. super inexpensive. And there's thousands of people from us europe young kids 
doing all kinds of internet work and they can live anywhere. And, you know, I love, you know, New York city and LA, but you know, $4,000, it's just small one bedroom, maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Or maybe like the size of a living room to share with like so many people. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 when I first started out in New York, I said, oh, I had a, a two bedroom and they actually put a, a board in their living room and there was a, like a, a, a manger you could sleep on top of. That's not a bedroom. You know, they were trying to rent it for 1500 bucks. Um, you know, it's crazy right now. Uh, you know, I love real estate and it's gotten expensive, but a lot of people just can't afford it. I mean, it's just crazy. How are you going to afford the average house now is four hundred four thousand dollars in the United States. Um, you know, rents fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars in a lot of places. I mean, what do you have to make a month to better afford that? It's not affordable for a lot of people. What are they going to do? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I guess that's a big question as well, too. We'll uh, talk about how the predict how the future is going to unfold, especially uh, real estate and some of the hot topics. We'll talk about some of your books as well, too. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit our line at SoundCloudStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundCloud Studios is the answer. SoundCloud Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at SoundCloudStudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson has garnered great reviews and Eve 11 enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, one of our 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. And for great gift ideas, go to amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books, merchandise, and more. I'll support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Wagner Show.com. You buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who's a New York Times bestselling author and wealth expert for CNN and Fox News, Robert Shemin, here on the Mike Wagner Show. And before we talk about uh, what the experts are going to predict in real estate, we got your books as well, too, like How Come That Idiot's Rich and I'm Not. Main people are asking that secrets of a millionaire um, real estate investor, how to avoid the 75 most costly mistakes and uh, pizza with a rabbi. That's one of my favorite titles. And tell us about some of your books. <laughs> so the last one is I started a series where I'm going to have pizza with interesting people that people don't know much about um, Judaism. So I sat down with a great rabbi and who gave me, I answered all the tough questions. I'm going to be doing that with all kinds of interesting people. So it's a new series of books I started. I try to write about three books a year. It's kind of my hobby, my love. I just love doing it. And, uh, you know, there's so many myths out there and misunderstandings, but that's why I write a lot of money books and wealth books, because it's really hard, Mike, to uh, have someone educate you about how to get rich. They don't do it in school or how to make money or how to be successful or how to buy some houses uh, or a, a house. You know, I went to high school and eventually later after flunking out, went to college and Nobody taught me how to make or save money. And the results are sad. I think um, less than uh, 25, 30% of Americans have $5,000 available to them uh, in their checking accounts. Uh, over half of Americans have no savings. Uh, the average net worth when people uh, get to retirement is about 80,000. That means half or above that and half or below that. A lot was zero. And the number one thing is that no one ever started a systematic savings and investing program. You know, if we make 50 grand, we spend 70. If we make 100, we spend 120. Um, and there's always ways you can buy a house without money or credit. A lot of misinformation out there. And that's like to help people uh, get started. So uh, let's get started. Which topic would you like to cover first? Real estate, money, getting out of debt. What's going to happen with these crazy markets? 
Well, you know something too. I'm glad you brought that up. I love I love having pizza with you, especially with a rabbi. That's one of my favorites. And uh, I do like uh, sausage and pepperoni, by the way. A little bit of uh, onion and also uh, green pepper in it too. So uh, I I hope that tickles your fancy. If it doesn't, you know, let me know. I'm okay with it. <laughs> and we got to make a conversation record and let's make a book. There we go. Pizza with Mike. There you go. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think. We're, yeah, we'll have with a rabbi. There you go. And all kinds of people, <laughs> real estate investors and more. And of course, you know, I guess the big question is, is that the, what do the experts predict will unfold in the future, especially in real estate with the uh, interest rates? You know, they're just going through roof right now. Last report was what? 6% I heard. You know, so in a couple of months, Mike, the 30 year mortgage, you know, there's exceptions went from about 2.8 or three up to about six. That's <laughs> double. I mean, people are buying a house in contract and all of a sudden their mortgage payment goes from 1400 to 18, 1900. That's an extra four or 500 bucks a month. And a lot of people don't have it. And it's, it's kind of frightening. A lot of people are getting priced out of the market. A double whammy. We got inflation. How the house prices still have not come down. They're going up, 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 up 10, 20, 30% in some markets. And number two, now to get a loan, which used to be great, you know, super cheap, 2.5, 2.6. Now you're looking at 5.8, 6.2, and it's getting tough out there. And the problem is, uh, here's one thing a lot of people don't know. What's the real inflation rate? You know, the government says five, six, seven, eight. But if you look at the government statistics, I understand it. They don't include energy or food. That's like saying, what's the price of a car, but we're not going to count the engine or the chassis. Or, 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 so, or like all the safety features, you know, that's a big yeah. factor too. It's like back in the day, it's like without the safety features, I remember um, my, my dad, I think he had, um, I think he, he had a Cadillac. It was just like, like $4,000, but it's like, didn't have all the safety features. And you bought it like Chevy Nova, it was like 2000 bucks. I mean, you didn't have all like the safety features. You're an engine chassis. You got your, um, just like your, your radio, your air conditioner at the yeah. most. I mean, that was it. So. But, but the inflation numbers don't include food or energy. So real inflation is probably a lot higher. You can't believe those government uh, statistics. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Your money is worth less mm -hmm. every month, every year. And uh, our salaries are not going up that much. So people are, are getting a sticker price with gas and housing. And here's the bad news is in the real estate market in certain markets, by the way, there is no real estate market, Mike. That's another big myth. You know, stock market, stock market went down. Well, which market? Uh, S&P, uh, uh, healthcare stocks, liquor stocks, they've been going up. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Which segment of the market? So we will say the real estate market in Florida or Miami or the United States. And I travel internationally and I tell people, the U.S. is kind of 50 countries stuck together. You know, I'm in Texas right now. You could drive 14 hours in Texas and still be in Texas mm -hmm. pretty much. So which market? So when, when I say the markets, you know, are going up or down in every city, there's a bunch of micro markets, little pockets. So that's the first myth. Second myth in a lot of areas, it's gotten very expensive. Interest rates are going up. And here's the bottom line, supply and demand. We got a problem, Mike, mm -hmm. 8 million house shortage about. They just haven't built that much. And the millennials are the, one of the biggest population groups. They're starting to buy houses. Now the inflation and the high prices will slow it down a bit in certain markets. So I always tell people, do you think the real estate market's cheap right now? No, <laughs> you know, they're not giving it away. Do you think it's medium price? Probably not in your area. Is it really expensive? Yes. And as you know, Mike, when you have a party, you got to pay the price. There's always a bit of a hangover. A lot of money out there. Price been going up still in certain areas. We're, we're already starting to see it. Corrections. So we're being very careful and waiting to buy because right now you're not at the bottom of the market. You're not at the middle. You're at the high part. Mm -hmm. Too much it, money out there, chasing too, too few houses, and the prices have gone crazy in certain areas. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, the big cities, of course, we all know about as well, too. And also increasing homelessness as well, too. That I was reading a report that um, I, I guess the um, markets like in Los Angeles, San Francisco has gone up so high where people are being driven out of homes. They can't get into a, a rental unit, like an apartment or a condo or anything. They're all out yeah. in the street and it's getting more dangerous too. There's also a public safety when, when people can't get a house, can't get even to an apartment or a hotel. It's like they're all, they're all out in the street and it's going to be like a jungle out there. 
Yeah, certain big cities are the quality of life gone way down. And there's a trend. A lot of people like me investing have gone to what I call the tertiary cities, the secondary. Nashville is one of the hottest markets where I'm from. It was a sleepy little town with some good country music and some good biscuits and gravy. And I love it. And now it's like uh, one of the hottest areas around because a lot of people, like you said, are leaving some of those areas. And also they're leaving the high tax areas. They're going to warm weather areas and they're getting away from the urban mess because they, they want to be a little more peaceful. And that's why you see some of these secondary cities go up. I think Nashville is up 30% in a year. Mm -hmm. I so, remember that. And, and I think Atlanta back in the day was a sleepy little town around the 50s and 60s. And all of a sudden it started moving around the 70s as well, too. It became a sleepy market. You had Flagstaff, you had Phoenix, and of course you had Austin. And uh, there was also word that up in um, North Dakota, especially in Bismarck, that they project that Bismarck in 2007 and 20 years would be like the next uh, Atlanta or so. That's a little bit of historical information. People go, what's the number one reason real estate's gone up so much? Yes, there's demand. Yes, there's a shortage. But you're going to be shocked by the answer. Government regulation. Think about it. You know, North Dakota 80 years ago or California, your, your grandparents were in a wagon or a truck. And they could go out there, buy some land and build anything they probably wanted to and nobody cared. Mm -hmm. And now to start to build a house in L.A. or even Nashville, you're talking about fifty dollars to $100,000 of legal fees, uh, regulations, environment. You know, some of that's really good stuff. You got to protect, uh, you know, uh, our land. But it's so expensive before we even build anything. Government regulation. And I always ask people, that's what a Harvard MBA, uh, MBA study says. That's the number one reason real estate's gone up so much. Do you think government regulation is going to go down or up <laughs> in the future? It usually never goes down, and that really increased the cost of building. That's why a lot of people I mean, build homes. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also factor in, too, as well as with safety and all that. And, of course, thanks to the pandemic, it's like they're really keeping a close eye on things, you know, sanitation and everything else. I mean, that's been a big issue. Safety is also an issue. Like something happens in the home. I mean, lawsuits are going up uh, like sevenfold. That's another issue. Yeah. Lawsuits. Well, I eventually went to law school too, kind of for fun. And uh, I think there's, a, what, 180, 200,000 lawyers that graduate every year in America, more than pretty much anywhere else in the world, and they need work. <laughs> <laughs> they should go freelance like you and me. I think all the lawyers out there looking for work, just go freelance, will you? <laughs> you start a wine blog. Oh, there Start you go. Bar. Yeah. Wine, coffee, pizza, just about everything. Of course, you can also invest as well, too. And um, you talk about the stock markets and everything. And of course, you know, the question is like, you know, when's a good time to invest, when to start or what to start or um, what stocks or what sector to start off with when it comes to investing. So here's the bottom line. I wish you would have started investing 20 years ago. I wish you would have started investing 10 years ago, both in real estate, bought every house you could get your hands on, bought most decent quality stocks. So what I like to do is, um, you know, you can of course get the experts. And now they have all these uh, great applications where you can invest a dollar a day, $10 a day and go with some of the pros. And I'll tell you those websites, applications are nice. One is watch your cost, but two is get started a systematic investing and savings program. Even if you start now and the market goes down two, three, four, five, 10, 15 percent, which it could, you're not selling now. You're going to sell in 10, 20 years, I hope. You're a long-term investor. And I think the number is if you put like 50, 80 bucks a week in the market over the last 20 years, you probably have over a million dollars um, at an eight, 10 percent return, which is actually done. So the main thing is uh, get started, watch your cost, and you're a long-term investor. So I buy property below market, stocks you can't buy below market, but I'm thinking five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. If the markets go down a little bit, if my stock goes down or my house goes down a little bit, I'm not gonna like it, doesn't feel good, but I know that I'm in it for the long-term. And of course, the houses I rent them, money's coming in every month. We have a saying in Tennessee, you can't go broke making a profit. <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, that's certainly true. I'm sure the writing country songs are by, by now making big hits out of that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, you know, you got to get started. And, and that's what people don't do. They don't start usually they're 30, 40 or 50. And the only investment they make is their own home, which, again, over time has done pretty well for most people. But don't put it off. And in real estate, we make all the money on the buy. We buy from highly motivated sellers, 20, 30 percent below market. So if market goes down a bit, we're still OK. 
We know our numbers, which most people, you know, don't take the time to do. So we're making money every month, you know, what comes in, what goes out. And I always tell people, you're either making rent or paying rent. <laughs> if you want to get wealthy, it's a little better, easier to do it when you're getting rent and with the right property, with the right uh, thing. And then people say, well, I don't want to manage property. Well, I don't want to manage anything, a McDonald's, a Subway, or myself, I can barely manage. So we get professional managers, manage the manager, and there goes that uh, problem out of the uh, out of the window. You know, I'm not taking a, my, my toilets broken on Saturday morning calls. That's what the managers do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and rightfully so, too. And that's where you also hire the help as well, too, that um, is also important, too, like, you know, best way to combat unemployment you know we're in a gig economy that um you know not you know back in the day it's like they encourage everybody go to college get a degree now it's just like you know they're very short on um on on, on uh blue collar jobs trade jobs electricians plumbers everything we're seeing like a mass shortage out there and mike where did everybody go you know since the pandemic i was in nashville they're starting people with 22 bucks an hour to flip burger starting and they don't have help where did everybody go <laughs> what happened Oh my gosh, that's a good question. And uh, I was talking to some of the people up where I'm at and there was a nursery that was um, offering like $30 uh, dollars an hour, but there was hardly any help. You also got stores all over, like what, 15, 18 or 20, whatever it is, hardly anybody comes. And um, there's also places you're right that, uh, yeah, 20, 30, 40 an hour, we got all benefits in the world, but nobody's coming. The question is why? That's the thing. Well, believe it or not, some of them that read my book and during the pandemic started their own businesses, selling on eBay, real estate, uh, like you said, freelancing, and they're not going back to those service jobs and they want to be their own boss and they got a taste or an understand of freedom. You know, I'm going to run my own schedule. I'm going to live where I want to live. And then, of course, some got checks that would be unemployment or, or government checks, and that gave them enough time to start business. That, that's what apparently has happened while those folks started their own businesses or found mm -hmm. better ways to make money, mm -hmm. which that's right. is good and bad. That's right, too. And also taxes as well, too. And of course, you know, I love to have you back on, you know, talking uh, tax season and everything else and, um, you know, save up for taxes and um, some of the strategies as well, too, involving real estate. Yep. Well, the, the tax code, according to my accounts, has a big uh, uh, sign on the front page. Start your own business, whether it's real estate or something. When you work for somebody else, you're pretty much, they're taking the money out of your check. You don't really get many deductions, a standard deduction, or maybe have like a kid, you get $1,500 credit for each kid you have. Good luck with that, you know. Um, but when you start your own business, you get to write off everything. And I tell people money and taxes are a game. I have experts and they say, well, when you're in real estate or have your own business, you get to write off stuff. So my car is 70% business. My phone 70% business. My computer's 80% business. When you work for somebody else, you don't get those write-offs. And Mike, as you know, you can pay taxes two ways. And I'm not an accountant. This is what my expert say. is here for educational purposes only. Check with your own expert because every situation is different. Um, you can pay with taxes with check or cash or credit card, I guess, or with write-offs and deductions. Hmm. Um, no politics here. That's why no real estate investor, including the former president, would want anyone to see their tax returns because there's a lot of things you can legally do, write-offs, depreciation. There's tax credits for helping uh, do housing and, and low-income housing. And that's how we pay for taxes legally and ethically, not with our money. And it's hard to get rich, Mike, if, if somebody's taking 30, 40, 50% out of every check or uh, your annual income. But when you start your own business and a lot of benefits for real estate investing, not my fault. I didn't write the tax code. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I didn't write it. <laughs> Most people don't even understand it. <laughs> so, I, but there, there, it's a game. And once you know the rules, of the game, you would start your own business, get those write-offs, get those deductions, depreciations, um, because uh, that's how most wealthy people pay. Um, mm -hmm. um, that's how most people uh, pay their taxes with write-offs, deductions, depreciation for real estate not with their salary. Mm -hmm. and, and, also, and also too, you know, going back to some of the books as well too, seven secrets of the um, money masters as well too. Maybe just share a few secrets as well. Well, we've already talked about them. Uh, number one, uh, you know, you're either paying interest or getting interest. You've got to start investing or start your own business. Uh, number two, as we talked about in the beginning, do something you love. Uh, number three, uh, when your money's not moving, it's probably not making you much. A lot of people are taught, 
the money in the bank, let it sit there. Put the money in your home equity, let it sit there. Put the money in a retirement account and let it sit there. And if it's not making you a return, especially above inflation, you're losing money. So when I have money or credit, I put it to work. It's like water. If it's not running or flowing, it's probably getting bacteria and dying. And mosquitoes um, attracting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the mosquitoes, we have another word for that in investing, parasites. and people All that, that too. Of- yeah. I mean, we got mosquitoes over there too in our neighboring state, Minnesota. What, 10,000 likes, 10 zillion mosquitoes? That is so true. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what do money masters do? They know that their money has to be put to work. So for instance... Uh, you know, you got to be really careful. When I get those offers in the mail for a credit card, zero interest for a year, most people throw them away. I'm like, I could use their money. So what does a bank do? You put your money in the bank, whether it's $10 or $10, they pay you zero or 1% free checking. And what do they do? They loan it out to your neighbor at four, five, six, seven percent on a house or a car. They're using your money to work. So when I get those credit card offers at zero percent, I take the money and I know. You got to know what you're doing. I can make 10, 12, 15, 18% on real estate, perhaps investments and using other people's money. If you know what you're doing, that's what the banks do. And I always tell people, don't let the banks make all the money. Um, Speaking of which, another secret of the money masters, everyone thinks the only way to buy a house, this is what I was taught, who taught you is mom and dad said, "Uh, get a job, get really good credit, get a big deposit down. And maybe if you're nice, the bank will give you a mortgage. Mm. and or pay cash <laughs> and most of them don't have the three four hundred grand to buy a starter home these days and they don't have the deposit or credit so we have 11 other ways to buy real estate one owner financing there's sellers who don't really care so much about your credit that will give you money number two there's alternative funds not banks that don't care about your credit uh, that can get you a home loan uh, number three there's lease with an option to buy one of my favorites in an expensive market like now you're not buying it you have the right to buy it Rent goes to credit, lock in a price. You find some motivated sellers, which is difficult, but possible in today's markets. And you're not throwing your rent money away. I'm a landlord. I'm glad people are, you know, paying two grand a month. That's 24 grand a year. Think about all the money people spent on rent. They could have used to buy a home, do a lease option, owner financing, or take some of that money, at least invest it in something, not Mm. the landlord. And as a landlord, I'm happy. Thank you. (laughs) But, uh, Stop doing it. Exactly. And you also touched on retirement as well, too. That's another concern. Yeah, your typical Roth IRAs and uh, 401ks and everything else. And what's the state of a retirement? And uh, what's probably the uh, best best method to go in terms of investing for retirement? Obviously, the game has changed over 10, 20, 30, even like, you know, 50 years ago in terms of retirement. Well, well now the technology, again, you have these amazing investors. You go on an application. And start with, you know, it used to be at like a hundred thousand dollars to get a good money manager. Now they're, uh, my son's 27, but he makes like a few bucks a day, change a few dollars a week, and puts them in these different apps where they're actually spread around around real estate, around uh, a stock market. And they're getting, he's getting some of the, the managers that the millionaires, billionaires used to get. So that's a big, big development is get started. You get started with a dollar, ten dollars, fifty bucks, um, you know, go around, look at those apps. A lot of them have very little cost and pretty good returns. Same with real estate. You can participate in commercial real estate deals with 50, a hundred bucks, which Mm. again, that you need the, you know, uh, left for the millionaires and billionaires. So that's one way. Number two, never invest in something. Understand picking a market niche and stick with it. Uh, Warren Buffett. He's an expert, believe it or not, in a very small niche. Find something you like. Uh, I started out with restaurants in the stock market. When I was a kid, I loved Wendy's. <laughs> no, yeah, so, we all loved Wendy's. That's right. What 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 was your favorite? Um, what was your favorite menu offer there? I love that. Um, what, what was it? That Baconator or something? It's like that's still my favorite. <laughs> yep, there's I just had great taste, and I started buying a stock of something I knew that I liked that I was impressed with, and it did very well back then. So, you know, invest what you know, don't, don't never invest in something you don't know. You know, when your friends come up with some uh, complicated Bitcoin investment, you don't know what it is. Please don't do that. <laughs> oh, I was just going to mention about that, the Bitcoins in the uh, NFT markets. And um, you said something about that. It's almost like it's a great thing. Sometimes you don't. And sometimes you per- pursue a caution. And from your perspective, what's the difference between the uh, Bitcoin, and the uh, NFTs and crypto? Well, first. So I'm not an expert in that, but I will tell you this. I do a little bit of investing and I tell people, if you have to participate, 
take five or ten percent of your investing. Don't it's like a casino. Never, you know, take all your money and put on one bet. It's too risky. Uh, number two, there's some that I don't like about those markets. I've had friends make millions and lose millions of dollars. Is as, as far as I understand with certain coins, not all, 70, 80% of them are not in trading. They hold them. Kind of like the diamond market. You know, a couple of families just hold them. So not trading 100% of the market, you're trading 20% of it. And that creates a false supply, not much, false demand and false prices. If that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Mm -hmm. So you really got to dig down deep. I'm a big believer in blockchain, that in the future, we're going to use it. It's great technology. But just like the high tech stocks, when they all started coming out, a, bunch, a couple of them did very well and a lot of them went bust. Please be super careful. Know what you're investing in. Don't bet all your, uh, put all your eggs in one basket. You know, it's exciting when you hear your friend made 20% in three weeks, but is it sustainable? And as we've seen now, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, 20,000, right. 80,000, 18,000. A lot of volatility, it, it, a lot of risk. It, it's like a huge roller coaster, you you could pretty much say. And uh, lastly, as well, too, um, if someone were to buy stocks today, what stocks would you recommend and why? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm not a stock picker uh, now. So what I do is either A, get a professional money manager as a good record, B, diversification, and C, uh, you need a, again, what I do is dollar cost averaging. I invest a little bit every month. So God forbid, if the market crashes next month or two or three, I'm not going to like it, but I know I'm not selling. That's when you lock in your losses. And I know I keep buying at those lower prices. So I hope that makes sense. You know, everyone's looking for the, for the magic button, win the lottery ticket, and I don't have it. I'm a long-term systematic investor. That's how you make money. Make sure you invest in value. Uh, that's what the wealthy people do. And here's the point, Mike. Fast money never seems to last. Have you ever noticed? The I have make noticed, never yes. Never <laughs> so right. it's slow, it's systematic, it's long-term. That's how you make money. I'm going to buy a house for, for a week. I'm not going to buy a stock for three weeks. Uh, if, you, if, if you know somebody can do that, pick it and consistently make money, God bless them. <laughs> but um, it's long-term systematic investing. And that's it, what the... It's certainly amazing as well, too. And um, and what do you see, Robert, in about uh, five years from now in the stock market? We'll answer that question just a minute. Or in real estate, I should say, you listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Muslims, The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with um, New York Times bestselling author, wealth expert for CNN and Fox News, Robert Shemin, after this timeout. We're back with author Robert Shemin, also um, wealth expert for CNN and Fox News here on the Mike Wagner Show. And Robert, we talked a lot about real estate. I learned a lot from you and um, just all kinds of um, everything across the, the board, real estate, stock markets and uh, investing and everything else. And it comes to real estate. What, what do you see in the future in about 2023, maybe like maybe two, three, four, five years down the road for real estate? Well, you're not going to like my answer. First of all, no one, including me, can predict the future. And I'll explain why, but then I'm going to give you some real pointers. Okay. Some real diamonds. Number one, remember five years ago, was anyone sitting around going, you know what? In two or three years, we're going to be all wearing masks, shut the airports down, not travel for some coronavirus. Nobody. So what you worry about probably never happens. And what you don't worry about always happens. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't believe that about investing, look at some relationships you've been in. Surprise. Anyway, here's the point. Um, listen. There's no one market in the stock or real estate market. Some markets are probably going to stay okay. Low tax states, jobs like my town, Nashville, supply and demand. Lots of jobs moving in, low taxes, good weather, you know, good place to live. A lot of places like that. Uh, some of the very expensive high tax states that don't have the jobs or support, uh, we're going to see some real corrections. We're already seeing millions of people behind on their home payments right now. Now, I don't believe it's going to be a crisis like it was in uh, 2008. That was a financial crisis where they made up paper. But we're going to see some real correction, some real downward trends, some real slowing down. It's already happening. Mike, as you know, behind every investor, every bank, every fund, there's a person. And about one or two or three months ago, the mood went bad. Oh <laughs> all my of a sudden, gosh. all you hear about is inflation. 
And, and gas prices too. That's been the gas prices, one. Putin, Ukraine, Russia, supply chain, travel problems, no baby formula. Like all of a sudden it went just bad and people are not in a good mood and investors are pulling back. Buyers are pulling back. So what does that mean for a shrewd person like you and me? Uh, we wait a little bit, we get our money together and we're going to see some real buys. You know, when maybe even Bitcoin or a stock or, or, or some real estate that goes down 10, 20, 30, 40%, um, you know, you got to have your backup plan. There's going to be real buys, but we're in for a real slowdown, uh, a little bit of a hangover from all this money floating around. It's called inflation. Your money's worth less. People start buying stuff and they get in a bad mood and things slow down. And the question is, what are you going to do about it? Now, when I, things slow down, I get excited. That's mm -hmm. when I start buying more. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's a good thing as well, too. And what else can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond, Robert? Well, uh, you better have a backup plan. There's going to be job losses. There's going to be uh, unemployment is going to go up and then almost, you know, nothing or zero for a long time. Um, and you better be prepared and get cash. You can always save some money, always look for some expenses to get rid of, you know, uh, uh, make it into a fun game. And again, start that systematic savings program and get ready because I believe in a year or two, not in the next couple of weeks or months, uh, we're going to see some real opportunities to buy stuff. And you missed the last one, right? People mm -hmm. are sitting around waiting. You missed the other one. So don't miss this one. Um, it's going to be, it's not going to be as huge as the ones before, I don't think, but we're going to see some real opportunities. And again, certain markets, certain companies will be okay. Uh, they may get out a little bit or not up as much. But we're going to see some real opportunities. And certainly so we'll be prepared. We will be prepared, Robert. We're here with Robert Shemin, um, author of um, How Come That Idiot's Rich and I'm Not, along with several other uh, best selling books in the New York Times on the Mike Wagner Show, wealth expert as well, too. And um, who do you consider your biggest influence in career, Robert? Uh, the biggest in influence careers? In, influence in your career, yes. Oh, for me, uh, for me personally, it would be mentors. Uh, all you got to do is copy and paste just like on the email, mm -hmm. find success. I met a guy with success on real estate and I got him as mentor, copy and paste. Uh, when I want to grow my businesses to a new level or start businesses, I found people had already grown that business. And I always tell people, if you want your kid in high school to play golf or tennis or football or whatever you're into, you need a coach. The kid's not going to show up by themselves in practice. And if your kid wants to go play college ball or Olympics, they're going to need a better coach. So I don't know anyone that's really successful without mentoring. Number two, education. I'm still to this day reading one or two books a week, articles, educate yourself, become like my father taught me narrow and deep, uh, you know, become an expert and something you love to do. Um, and when you love it, you don't feel like you're working. That's I right. love money. I love real estate. I love markets. I love starting businesses. It's my hobby. So I don't really, is not really working. Um, you can do the same. And the other thing is stick with it. Everybody wants to start something. They've been thinking about writing a book, starting a business. Well, here's my advice. Please start today. Block 30 minutes a day, 20 minutes. Start writing. Start doing research. Start meeting people. Make a plan. I don't care if it's two hours a week, four hours a week, 15 minutes a day. And everybody's got time. And here's the kicker. You know this. You've been doing this for a long time. Stick with it. I promise you'll get better. <laughs> <laughs> and great advice as well too i like that robert i love it and what's the and, uh, <laughs> and and of course the best advice uh, you gave and what's the other best advice we can all learn from you <laughs> yep well that that, that thing stayed with it everybody remember, you remember your first day of work you know i didn't know where anything was who was doing what how to do anything and after six months it's easy you got to get started and stick with it um and have fun with it and uh, the other thing is a big one I used to stress about money. You know, the minute you want to stress people out, talk about mortgages, debt, banks, money, the market, and the mood changes. <laughs> it's no fun. And the minute you can make money a game, which my mentor taught me, it becomes a lot easier. You got to take the emotion out of it. My family was always upset every because we never had any money. <laughs> we were always yelling about it, screaming about it, and, you know, uh, attitude. And there's plenty out there. Other people have done it. Uh, who have less skills than you, you can do it too, if you want to. 
Mm-hmm. And that's certainly great advice as well, too. Once again, we're with the uh, New York Times bestselling author and wealth expert for CNN and Fox News, Robert Shemin here on the Mike Widener Show. Robert, a very big thank you for your time. You're absolutely amazing. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep this up to date. Keep in touch. Love having you back. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact? Where can people uh, check out your books and also uh, check you out as well? Well, first of all, great to be on the Mike Wagner Show. Uh, I respect everyone here learning and listening. And if they want to uh, free stuff, got a lot of free stuff at my website, Robert Shemin, S-H-E-M-N.com. And of course, uh, I'm on the social media, which is the, the new highway. And we got some free videos and free courses for you there on uh, Facebook and Instagram, Robert Shemin, S-H-E-M-N. Say hello. And if you have some questions, let us know. We'll try to answer them. How's that? People help me. So I love helping people all the time. And that certainly do so. And that's great advice. Once again, Robert, a very big thank you for your time. You have an absolutely amazing looking forward to having it soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. We wish y'all best. And Robert, you've definitely got a great future out of you. <laughs> thank you. Stay happy, healthy, and much success.